Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today RGCSC. This video is a tutorial for Physics Paper 4 Theory, version 4.1 for May-June 2023 examination. Figure 1.1 shows a straight section of a river where the water is flowing from right to left at a speed of 0.54 meters per second. The swimmer starts at point P and swims at a constant speed of 0.72 meters per second relative to the water and at right angles to the current. So if I draw this as a diagram, it looks like this. Question A part 1. Determine relative to the river bank both the magnitude and direction of the swimmer's velocity. So in order to determine the magnitude and direction, you have to draw out your vector to scale. I will use 1 cm to 0.1 m per second. That means this would be 7.2 cm and this will be 5.4 cm. The next step would be to complete this triangle and you will get your resultant force like this. If you have drawn this to scale, you can measure this with ruler which will give you 9 cm. Since 1 cm equals to 0.1 m per second, 9 cm will give you a magnitude of 0.9 meters per second. Next, to find the direction of the swimmer's velocity, you need to find at which angle the swimmer moves. Since it mentions here that it is relative to the river bank and the swimmer's resultant force is this direction, the angle that you're looking for should be here. If you have drawn this to scale, you can just place your protector accordingly and you will get an angle of 53 degrees. Or you could also use trigonometry to get the value of theta which would be approximately 53 degree. Part 2. After 1.5 minutes, the swimmer reaches point Q. Calculate the distance between P and Q. We know that speed equals the distance over time. So in order to find distance, we can just multiply speed with time. The speed of the swimmer is already found in part 1, so we will just substitute it. And the time taken here is 1.5 minutes and we need to convert this to seconds which would be 90 seconds. And the answer will be 1.8 meters. Question B. When the swimmer is crossing the river, his actions produce a constant forward force on his body. Explain why he moves at a constant speed. When an object is moving at its constant speed, it means that the resultant force equals to zero. As the swimmer swims forward, he experiences a forward force and water resistance on the opposite direction. So in order for the swimmer to maintain a constant speed, the forward force has to equal to its water resistance which is at the opposite direction. Question 2. Figure 2.1 shows a motorcyclist accelerating along a straight horizontal section of track. The motorcyclist and motorcycle have a combined mass of 240 kg. Question A. On the straight horizontal section of the track, the motorcyclist accelerates from rest at 7.2 meters per second squared. Part 1. The motorcyclist reaches the end of the straight section of track in 5.3 seconds. Calculate the speed of the motorcyclist at the end of straight section. This question may sound confusing, but just think about which formula you should use to solve this part of the question. So let's list down all the information given in the question. Since we have the value of acceleration given here, we can use the formula of acceleration equals to final speed minus initial speed over time to calculate the value of final speed here. So let's substitute all the values and you will get the value of V equals to 38.16 meters per second, which is approximately 38 meters per second. Next part 2, calculate the resultant force on the motorcyclist and motorcycle on the straight section of the track. The formula to calculate force is F equals to mass times acceleration. Both the combined mass and the acceleration is already given in the question. So all you have to do is substitute your values and you will get a resultant force of 1728 newtons which is approximately 1700 
and the unit for force is newtons. Question B. At the end of the straight section, the track remains horizontal but bends to the right as shown in figure 2.1. So this is what happens. It goes straight and bends to the right. When the motorcyclist reaches the bend, she travels around the bend in a circular path at a constant speed. Part 1. Velocity is a vector quantity. State how a vector quantity differs from a scalar quantity. These are some of the types of questions in physics paper where you have to memorize the answers to. Vector quantity has both magnitude and direction, whereas scalar has only magnitude. Part 2. Describe what happens to the velocity of the motorcyclist as she travels around the bend at constant speed. As the motorcyclist enters the bend, her direction of motion changes. Since velocity is a vector quantity, it includes both speed and direction. So any change in direction implies that there will also be a change in your velocity. Therefore, your answer should be that the velocity changes. Part C. Explain why there must be a resultant force on the motorcyclist as she travels around the bend. Since there is an acceleration, we want to ensure that instead of the motorcyclist moving at a forward direction, there should be a force acting this way to ensure that the motorcyclist remains in a curved path. Question 3. A rubber balloon is inflated with helium and sealed so that no helium escapes. The balloon is then positioned immediately below the ceiling in a room. Heaters are switched on and the temperature of the air in the room increases. Question A. When the heaters are first switched on, the temperature of the air immediately below the ceiling increases more quickly than the temperature of the air in the rest of the room. Explain why this happens. This happens because heated air which is hot air is usually lighter compared to cold air. So it immediately rises up the ceiling. Question B. The temperature of the helium in the balloon increases and as the rubber stretches, the volume occupied by the helium increases. Part 1. State what happens to the motion of the helium particles as the temperature increases. As the temperature of the helium inside the balloon increases, the motion of the helium particles become more energetic, therefore they move faster. Part 2. As the rubber stretches and the volume of the helium increases, it says that the pressure of the helium remains constant. Explain, in terms of particles of helium, how the pressure of the helium remains constant. Okay, in terms of the particles of helium, here's how it works. The particles, atoms or molecules of helium are constantly colliding with the walls of the container. These collisions create pressure. And when the temperature increases, the particles will gain kinetic energy and move faster. This leads to more frequent and energetic collision with the walls of the balloon. Meaning that there will be more pressure exerted. But think about it this way. If we stretch the balloon simultaneously at the same time, we are creating more space for the particles to move around. So now you can imagine that even though the particles are colliding more often, they are no longer doing this in a smaller space. Hence, the pressure remains constant. So for a 3 marks question, you can answer like this. Question 4. A student investigates the efficiency of a filament lamp. Figure 4.1 shows the filament lamp with its glass bulb immersed in water in a beaker. The reading on the thermometer in the water is 19 degrees Celsius. Only the glass of the lamp is in contact with the water and the electrical connections are completely insulated. The lamp is switched on. At the end of the experiment, the temperature of the water is 21.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, just to summarize this question, it is telling us that when the lamp is turned on, it generates heat, which is then transferred to the water. This causes the temperature of the water to increase. It's the reason why it starts at 19 degrees Celsius and increases to 21.5 degrees Celsius at the end of the experiment. Question A. The mass of the water is 600 grams 
and the specific heat capacity of the water is 4200 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Part 1 Show that the increase in the internal energy of the water is 6,300 joules. Specific heat capacity has only one formula related to it which is energy equals to mass times specific heat capacity times the change of temperature. This question just requires us to prove that the value E here will be giving us 6,300 joules. So all we have to do is just substitute all the information given in the question. The mass is 600 gram which has to be converted into kg which is 0.6 kg and the reason is because our specific heat capacity here is given in kilogram. So specific heat capacity is 4200 and the change of temperature is 21.5 minus 19. This will give us a value of 6300 joules. So you have shown that the increase in the internal energy of the water is 6300 joules. Part 2 of this question. The lamp is switched on for 500 seconds and the power supplied to the filament lamp is 13 watts. The useful energy from the lamp is transferred as light. The energy that increases the temperature of the water is wasted energy. So we know that the energy that increases the temperature of the water is the internal energy meaning that the wasted energy is 6300 joules. Question wants us to determine the maximum possible efficiency for the filament lamp. The formula to calculate efficiency is useful energy which is the output energy over total energy which is the input energy multiplied by 100%. Now we are given with lots of information but you need that ability to identify which values belong to which data. We already know that the wasted energy is 6300 voltage. So now we have to calculate the total energy which is the energy supplied for this experiment. The question has given us time and power which we can use to calculate the energy. Energy is equals to power times time. So you will get the value of energy input which is 6500 joules. Now let's substitute all the values. Useful energy is the total energy input minus the wasted energy which is only 200 joule being used in this experiment. So we will get a possible efficiency of 3.08 percentage which is approximately 3%. Part B, the efficiency of the lamp is less than the value determined in A part 2, so just one reason for this. You can give a reason due to thermal energy losses to surrounding. Question 5, figure 5.1 shows a block ABCD made of glass that has a refractive index of 1.5. The block has one curved side AB and three straight sides BC, CD, and DA. There are right angles at C and D. The curved side AB is one quarter of the circumference of a circle that has its center at point P. A ray of monochromatic light enters the block through the curved side AB and strikes side BC at P. Some light emerges into the air and some is reflected. Question A. State what is meant by monochromatic. Again, another definition question that you have to memorize before taking your exams. Monochromatic refers to a light source or a beam of light that consists of a single color or wavelength. In other words, it is composed of light waves that have the same frequency. Since it is a one mark question, you can just write any of this. Question B. Explain why the ray of light does not change direction when it enters the block through side AB. So the question wants to know that when this monochromatic light hits the block ABCD, why does it not change direction but instead it travels straight until it hits point P? Okay, when light passes from air to glass, which is from more dense to less dense medium, it usually will be refracted like this. But if the ray strikes at a boundary of 90 degrees, 
or in another words a perpendicular angle, it does not go through any change of direction. Instead, the ray continues along its path without bending. So that's what's happening here. Since the light or the ray strikes at a perpendicular angle, it continues to travel straight until it hits point P. So for two marks, you can answer like this. Question C. Show that the critical angle C for glass of refractive index 1.5 is 42 degrees. Another question on asking you to prove the value. We only have one formula that involves critical angle, which is sine C equals to 1 over refractive index. The value that we have to prove is C equals to 42 degrees. So let's substitute all the other values that we have. After calculating this value in your calculator, you will get a value of C equals to 41.81 degree, which is approximately 42 degrees. So you have proven that the value of critical angle for refractive index 1.5 is indeed 42 degrees. Question D. Figure 5.1 shows that the angle between the ray of light and line AP is theta. Ray of light and line AP is theta, this angle. Mentions that angle theta increases to 45 degrees. Part 1. State and explain what happens to the light that strikes P. So we know that angle theta which is incident ray is 45 degrees. And from the previous part of the question, we know that our critical angles equal to 42 degree. When angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, all the light is reflected back into the glass tube due to total internal reflection. So you can answer like this for a two mark question. Part 2. When theta equals to 45 degrees, it says that the reflected light strikes side CD. Meaning that this light now strikes the side CD. Question wants you to describe what happens when this reflected light strikes side CD. So let's look at the diagram. The angle of theta is now about 45 degrees. meaning that it will also be reflected at an angle of 45 degree. So you have a 90 degree angle here. The light that strikes the side CD will now be reflected back like this. The light reflected back will be perpendicular to the light being reflected in. Since the question only gives you one mark, you can say that light is reflected back. 